Well, good morning, differential equations. Let's try, uh, let's try this problem. Um, <clears throat> so I have two tanks, uh, X, tank X, tank Y, tank, I drew, tried to draw tank X a little shorter because it's, it's just got a 10 gallon capacity. By the way, it's full of water and um, tank Y has 15 gallon capacity and it's full of water. And what's happening is uh, three gallons a minute is flowing out of tank X into tank Y. Three gallons a minute of the well-stirred mixture is th flowing out of tank Y into tank X. Initially, uh, tank X has 10 pounds of salt and tank Y has 20 pounds of salt. So I've got myself a little word problem and I think I'm going to try to set it up as a system of differential equations. Uh, it's, this is not all that difficult. I think I can talk about dx, dt, what's happening to tank x here. Let's see, what we usually started by what's coming into tank x. What's coming into tank x is three gallons a minute <clears throat> of a concentration of an unknown amount y uh, over 15 gallons of water, y over 15. That's coming into tank X. What's leaving tank X is three gallons a minute of an unknown concentration X over 10. What's leaving is three gallons a minute of X over 10. Yeah, that's how we used to do these problems, uh, except we didn't have two unknowns. Anyway, now we always had just one tank. But anyway, here we go again. Now what about dy dt? What's coming into dy dt? Oh, what's coming into dy dt is a positive three gallons a minute of this stuff, which is x over 10. That's the concentration leaving x. It's an unknown amount of salt x over 10 gallons of water. What's leaving tank y is negative three gallons a minute. Uh, of an unknown concentration, unknown amount y over 15. An unknown amount y over 15. There is an initial condition for x of zero, it is 10 pounds of salt. And for tank y at time zero, where there's 20 pounds of salt. So this is awesome. This is like a, 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 a system of differential equations. Two, linear differential equations, a system. Um, <clears throat> we use matrices to try to solve this. What I do is I write this as a column matrix called X prime. I write this, uh, oops, 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 oops. One little thing, in order to write it as a matrix, uh, I'm gonna write it like this just for a second. dx dt comma dy dt. That's a little column matrix there. And then in order to write this, I've got to switch these around. I need the X's and the Y's in the proper order. So I need negative 0.3X. Uh, that's 3 over 10. Negative 0.3X. I need the X first. And then I need the positive. 3 over 15 is 1 fifth or 0 0.2. 0 0.2Y. Um, what's this? This is 0.3X. And, and uh, negative 0.2y. Okay, so I'm sorry, I wasn't really writing it as a matrix yet. I was just rewriting, just move, I needed the x's over the x's and the y's over the y's. I needed to set it up like that. Now I can write it as a matrix. I would call this big matrix, right, this little column matrix like I tried to have before, x prime. And I would have the coefficient matrix, negative 0.3, positive 0.2, positive 0.3, negative 0.2, times the variable matrix x, <clears throat> which is the x, y. And that's what you're solving for. You, at the end, you want a function of x's and y's. Um, OK, we learned a little bit of how to do this. I uh, definitely need some room to do this. Uh, but let's go. I can go right here. I can bet you I can find these eigenvalues. What the first step? I taught you the theory last video. Now I'm just going to do it. It should it should take a little quicker. Maybe let's see. Uh, I need this negative 0.3 minus lambda, this determinant of this matrix with lambdas subtracted from the diagonal. So this matrix with 
lambda subtracted from the diagonal, and then I do the determinant of that. So subtracting lambdas from the diagonal due to the determinant of that. The determinant is this product minus this product. So that is uh, negative 0.3 minus lambda times negative 0.2 minus lambda uh, minus a 0.06, I think that's what that is, minus a 0.06, and we set it equal to zero. We want this determinant to equal zero. So there's the determinant. This is called the characteristic equation. If I foil it out here, I'll be able to try to solve for lambda. It's kind of nice. This actually ends up being a positive 0.06, and then a positive 0.3 lambda, and a positive, I think I get a positive 0.5 lambda, and then I get a positive lambda squared, and then that negative 0.06, equals zero. So those 0.06's go away. Um, <clears throat> running down here to the bottom of the screen, I can factor out a lambda and a 0.5 plus lambda equals zero. I set those both equal to zero and I've just found my uh, eigenvalues. Lambda equals zero and lambda equals negative 0.5. Get my characteristic equation and I found my eigenvalues. Um, if you remember, uh, now I got to find the eigenvectors that are associated with these eigenvalues. All right, I'm going to create some space here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to create some space. I think I'll uh, get rid of some of this information. I'm sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. All right. You know, in order to, to find the eigenvalues, we would do this. We would do lambda equals zero and try to find the eigenvector. So I'm plugging this lambda back in. When I plug this lambda back in, then I get, when, when it's zero, I get a negative 0.3, a 0.2, a positive 0.3, and a negative 0.2 plugging this lambda equals zero back in here, but not in here. This is the determinant. I'm plugging it back in the matrix. So I've got the matrix, and I multiply that matrix by the unknown k, k1, k2, and I get it to equal zero, zero. And so by doing this, I can find the k1 and k2. And what I taught you is these are always dependent equations. So you get these two dependent equations. And so you don't really solve two dependent equations. You just need one of them. Negative 0.3K1 plus 0.2K2. That's what happens when you multiply row 1 times this column equals 0. Uh, the second equation is dependent on the first, so it doesn't help you solve for K1 and K2. What you do is you choose K2 to be something convenient. Now, let's uh, look at this a little. Let's see. That's a 0.2K2. I'm going to move this to the other side. Equals 0.3K1. Uh, you know, I, 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 uh, uh, can I multiply by 10? 2K2 equals 3K1. Uh, I think I want, uh, I can just choose K1 to be anything I want. Uh, I think I'm going to choose K1 to be a 2. If K1 is a 2, then find K2. If K1 is a 2, that's a 6. Divide by 2, K2 is a 3. So I found the eigenvector. The eigenvector is 2, 3. The K1 was a 2. I divide by 2, K2. I choose, I chose this. And I was smart. I mean, I was. Conf I mean, you could choose anything, and what you'll always have is this ratio. You'll have a two to three ratio between K one and K two. So you know, if you would have chose a one, this would have been uh, um, three halves. If you would have chose a twenty, this would have been a thirty. I mean, you can choose however you want. I try to get the simplest version. If you choose a, a one and a one and a half, maybe you could multiply by two to get two and three. Uh, but so there's kind of many eigenvectors, uh, uh, and they're always constant multiples of each other. So, <clears throat> all right, let's do the other lambda. If lambda equals 0.5, negative 0.5, um, run that ink there. If lambda equals negative 0.5, is that what it is? Yes. I plug it in. Subtracting a negative 0.5. Subtracting a negative point is adding a 0.5. I get a little 0.2. 
and that's a point two, and that's a point three, and when I plug in a negative point five, I'm actually adding it, and so I get a little point three there. And that's multiplied by a different K1 and K2, and that also equals 0, 0. All right, I'm going to get rid of this. So i got a little room. So now I can try to find uh, this. This is easy. Again, you can sort of see, man, these are dependent equations. Uh, these two equations that I have are dependent. So all you need is one of them. So here it is, this row times this column, 0.2K1 plus 0.2k2 equals that zero. <clears throat> you, let's see, you know, whatever you want to do. I'm going to move, uh, let's see, I'm going to move him over. 0.2k2 equals negative 0.2k1. If I divide by 0.2, k2 is negative k1. So that's the relationship. So now choose whatever you want. Uh, so I'm going to choose k1 to be a 1. Sorry. K1 is a 1, and therefore K2 is a negative 1. And, and again, it, uh, we just found the eigenvector. Uh, but the, any constant multiple of this would work. If you, chose, <clears throat> if you chose him to be negative 1, he would have been positive 1. If you chose negative 2, he would have been positive 2. If you chose positive 3, he would have been negative 3. Any constant multiple of this works. But I, I always try to pick the simplest one through experience. I try to get this kind of the, the simplified version. Dude, we're done. We have the solution. We're not done. Uh, we have the solution to this differential equation. Uh, what we have is the two solutions, actually. <clears throat> um, so again, I need some room. Uh, but what we have is big capital X, the matrix, big capital X. And it, what it does is it equals C1 times big capital X1 plus C2 times big capital X2. And what we have is the big capital X1 and X2. Let me show you what I mean. We have uh, this X1 is the K1. What was that K? 2, 3. 2, 3 times E to the lambda T. Now, that's funny. That lambda was a 0. That's okay. E to the 0 T will be a 1. All right, I'm getting rid of this. I'm sorry. Getting rid of this so I can have my room back. There's my other answer. I needed this other answer right here. Uh, here comes C2. There's this K, 1 negative 1 times e to the lambda t. That's what the answers we at the, the theory the other day was that we assume these answers. Uh, cool, dude. That's the answer. <clears throat> Um, we do have this initial condition, which I kind of wrote like that. If I write that initial condition in big matrix form, big capital X equals the matrix 10, 20. Right? You're plugging in a 0 for T, and you get the 10 and the, and the 20. I could do that here, then. I could plug in the 0 for T, and I get 10 and 20. So applying that initial condition here, getting rid of it, you're going to need some more room. Always need more room. I could use a bigger board. A bigger board might be nice. Hopefully you're keeping up with me. You can hit pause before I erase it, if I warn you. All right, where are we at? Uh, I'm done. I want to find C1 and C2, and this will help. Uh, and if I plug in a 0, I get a 10 and a 20 over here. If I plug in a 0 for my T. So plugging in a 0 for T gives me this c1 times the 2, 3, and, and e to the 0 is a 1. Uh, this gives me e to the 0, which is a 1, because I'm plugging in a 0. e to the 0 is a 1, so then I have c2 times 1, negative 1. And really, this is here I am staring at these matrices in matrix format. The truth is, if I want to find C1 and C2, I want to go back to old easy algebra and just solve two equations, two unknowns. So I'm going to go back to my old easy algebra, uh, where if I go across that top row, what I see is 10 equals 2C1 plus a C2. Reading the top row, multiplying the scalar C1 in here, 2C1, 1C2 is a 10. And 20 equals about the bottom row. 20 equals 3C1 and negative C2. And going back to good old algebra, I think I'll add these equations together 
Adding them eliminates the C2. I get a 5C1 equals 30. Is that true? That's true. Uh, real quickly, C1 is a 6. Plugging C1 back in there, 10 equals 12 plus C2. I just plugged in my 6 back there. Subtract that 12, and you get a negative 2 for C2. So now we have our answer. We have X equals, big capital X equals <clears throat> the 6, scalar 6, times the 2, 3, times that e to the 0, t. That's, I'm not going to even write that. That's a 1. And then I have my negative 2 times my vector 1, negative 1, e to the negative 0.5t. Ta-da! There's the solution. Hey, what if I wanted to write that solution not with matrices? All right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go here again. Let me go here again. Then across the top row, what we have is the answer for the, the amount of salt in tank X. That's the top row, which is a 12 minus, I mean, yeah, minus 2 e to the negative 0.5t. And then the answer for the, the amount of salt in tank Y at any time is across the bottom row, 18 minus, I'm sorry, plus 2 E to the negative 0.5 T. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Um, you know, what did he start off with? He started off with 10 pounds of salt initially, and he started off with, what was it, 20, 20 pounds of salt initially. But ultimately, you know, it just kept going forever. In fact, what if I keep letting it go forever? As t goes to infinity, uh, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and I end up eventually with 12 pounds of salt in tank X and 18 pounds of salt in tank Y. That's still the original 30 pounds there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a lot of work just to figure out he gains two pounds and he gain loses two pounds. That's interesting. Uh, again, uh, you know, it's a two by two equation. Maybe there's an easier, better, uh, maybe we could have used a little logic or some other little methods, but I'm trying to get you used to this method. It, you need it for three by threes or four by fours, but I don't think I'm gonna force you to do that. That's a good problem. I'm gonna have a little Simon here for you. There's similar problems, of course, and that's gonna be about it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for working. I appreciate it.